In the last section, we built a pretty simple application, uh, which was a task manager or, or a to-do list. And in this section, we're going to do the same thing, except instead of using the local storage API, we're going to use Web SQL, which is basically a client-side database. So I'm going to do a lot of copy and pasting in this section, in this code, because there's quite a bit. Uh, and it's just tedious to have to type it all out. Uh, so let's paste in our initial starter code, which is just an HTML frame. Uh, we have our jQuery, jQuery mobile, and our on device ready function. So what I want to do now is actually post paste in the body. And we'll go over it. So we have our header, we have our page, uh, our header data role, which just says add item. Um, I actually set it up to look just like the form that we did in the previous uh, local storage section. So we have an input, which has an ID of task input. We have a button with the ID of add. Uh, we have another button, which is pointing to the clear all function, which will clear all tasks. And then we have a message div, which we'll, we can put messages in. And then we have the list with the list view to format it nicely. So it's going to be a list of tasks. All right, so let's go up to the JavaScript. And in the on device ready function, we're going to paste some code. So what we're doing is we're initializing. Actually, you know what? Before we do that, let's just uh, create our our variables so we want to say variable uh, list list element and is going to be equal to and we're going to use a little bit of jQuery it's going to be equal to our tasks ID all right and the message, we're going to have a variable called message element, which will be equal to messages. And then we want to initialize our DB variable, but that's not going to be, uh, it's not going to point to anything right now, so it's just empty. Here is where we populate it. So we're going to assign the uh, database object to DB, uh, and this is going to be through a function called get database, which we'll create. Uh, and then we have a transaction. A transaction is basically an SQL statement or a query. Uh, it's the, the database doing something. So this takes a parameter, which is going to be another function, and we can use this TX. Uh, transaction execute to actually execute transactions or, or statements and we do that with TX dot execute SQL and in this particular transaction uh, let me move over a little bit we're creating a table if not exists now that's that's pretty important you want to make sure you have that if not exists just so you don't keep creating the same tables uh, and the tables is going to be called tasks now we need to put our fields, the fields that we want. So this table is going to have two fields, ID and name, which will be the task name. For ID, we, we declared it as an integer. It's also the primary key, and it will auto increment. So we don't have to insert the ID in our queries or our transactions. Okay, But we do need to specify a name. Okay, so if we go back, the next parameter for the uh, transaction is database error, and then the success um, callback is going to be called get items. And you'll notice with this with transactions, the error callback comes first. It's usually the other way around. Usually it's success and then error, um, but for some reason, this particular function. Um, goes error success. Alright, so that's pretty much it for the on-device ready. Um, 
what we want is for when someone clicks uh, where is it the add button we want to add a task so we need to use a little bit of jQuery up here and we want to say document dot ready because we need this to we need this to execute when the document's ready and we're gonna say um, function and in here is where we can write our jQuery so we want to grab that add button so we can do that with a jQuery selector we'll say button and it had an ID of add so we can grab that and we want to bind the click event so bind click and when it's clicked we're gonna run this function so when it's click what do we want to do first let's do a console uh, console log this is just for debugging really uh, console log we'll just say got task alright so the next thing we want to run a function called uh, insert item well, insert item alright so the next one I want to create is get database and that's what we assign to this DB variable get database so function get database and this is going to be with the, the actual um, API the open database method so we're going to return window dot open database All right so we could have actually just assigned uh, we could have said DB equals window dot open database we could have did that but I like to break it up and have this all in one function so uh, this takes a few parameters we're gonna name the database um, we'll call it my to do uh, and then we need the version which we'll just say 1.0 comma uh, and this is a, a, a user-friendly name for the database. We'll call it my to-do database. And then finally, we want the size that we want to allocate to the database. Uh, so let's, we'll do uh, two megabytes. All right, so that's pretty much it for the get database function. Uh, actually, we're going to move this quote over to here. Alright. Alright, so now I'm going to paste some stuff in. Uh, what we want to paste in now is get items. And that's going to just grab whatever tasks we have in the database. So let's paste that in. Alright, so this is going to run a select statement or transaction. Uh, we're going to console log entering get items, which we just go, we're entering into the method. Uh, we're going to run a transaction just like we did up here when we created our table, except it's going to be a select statement. So we're saying select all, the asterisk means all, from tasks, which is the name of the database and we could add some options here but we're not going to get into that uh, and then next we have our success and error callbacks all right and then we just have a console log that's saying we're leaving the function so we need our query success function and i'm going to actually grab that and paste that in it's kind of long All right, so query success. We have our a TX parameter and results. All right, so we're gonna process the results set list. This is also where we generate our HTML, our list items. So first we're gonna console log entering query success. That's just to let us know that we're entering that function. 
uh, we're going to create a variable called len len, which is going to be <coughs> excuse me equal to the number of results, which we can get with results.rows.length. And here we're going to initialize the output variable to just nothing. And then we're going to start off a for loop. We're going to say as long as i, I'm sorry, i is equal to zero, and as long as it's less than len, which is the amount of results, then we're going to create this output variable, or we're actually adding on to it. So we're saying output equals output, which is this blank variable. Uh, and then we're going to add the list HTML. So we have our list with an ID. The ID is going to be equal to the actual result ID. And then for the text that's displayed in the list is going to be the name, the task name. So remember, we, we only have these two fields for our task table. It's ID and name. Down here, we're going to grab the, the um, element with the ID of tasks and we're going to assign output so that would be this list this list item to tasks which down here we can see is an unordered list so we're going to insert the list inside of it um, let's see the message uh, is basically just going to tell us how many items so we're saying there are and then the, the variable len items in your list and then we're going to just call another uh, console log, which will let us know that we're uh, leaving the function. And then we have this task.listView refresh. And this is so we can keep our, our formatting for the list. All right, so that's it for that function. The next function is going to be insert item, which is called right here. So this is called when we click on the add button. So let's create that. Pop that in there. So we're going to do our console log. Um, we're going to create a variable called insert value. And this is just going to be equal to the task input. So it's equal to the te whatever text we type in. And then we're going to call a transaction. And we're going to execute some SQL, which is insert into tasks. So insert into the tasks table the name all right so name is the name of the value um, or the key and then the value is going to be insert value all right which is whatever we type into the in, into the text box um, pretty easy we don't have to specify an ID because we made it auto increment so we don't have to do that um, and then the next thing we're going to do our error callback and then the success callback and right here we're going to clear out the value from the input box so after it's submitted we just want to clear the bot the input and then finally we just have our console log all right so next I'm going to just we're going to create the database error function which is just going to um, grab the message div and insert some HTML into it we're going to insert the text SQL error and then we're going to concatenate on the error code so pretty simple and finally we're going to create the clear all function and this will just clear all the all of the tasks so we have our console log uh, we're going to create a transaction and the statement is delete from tasks so that will delete everything from the task table and that's going to call the database error which is defined up here in the get items for a successful uh, transaction which is right here all right so and the final thing we're going to do here is um, take the text out of the out, out of the input box so we're going to just assign it to nothing and then we want to return false because we don't want anything else to happen when that button's clicked so that's pretty much it and we don't need to test this on the device we can actually test it right in ripple uh, so let's reload All right, so we already have some items in the list from before so I'm gonna clear those out 
and let's add in, we'll say, pick up the kids, add as a task. You can see it automatically goes in there without any kind of page refresh. Uh, let's say, meeting with boss. You can add that, all right? Now we can also check down here if we're using if you're using Chrome, you want to use the developer tools. And under Web SQL, you can see our database, my to do. And we can actually go to the task table and we can see the structure of our of our task table. So this is really cool. You know that we, we it's very, very easy to debug when you're using tools like this. So I would definitely suggest suggest using Chrome uh, if you're using Firefox or you know, even worse, Internet Explorer. Um, if you're a developer, you can really benefit from using Chrome. Uh, so now all we have to do is click the clear tasks, and everything's clear. We also have the number of tasks. So that's it. That's how you can use Web SQL. So now we've learned how to use local storage as well as WebSQL to build the same exact um, application.